outfield of invitational pacers whom we are about to see. And uh, we, including uh, one pace in Philly who's uh, mostly concentrated in New York, Bill O'Donnell, great driver, and Sticks and Scones. We'll run through quickly a field for you, talk about them a little bit more later. Hillbilly or John Hogan, the driver. Uh, G's Romanero with Gary Ewing, a lot of uh, local support going to this horse. The number four horse is Deacon Lobel, and this is a major winner, nearly $300,000 in his career. Duncan's Wright also in the field. He's also won uh, $300,000 in his life. He is a mature horse. He's a six-year-old. Big Shift also in the field. Uh, Happy Seven, Lumbering Mel, uh, Lumbering Mel with a late driver change, uh, Wayne Truitt coming in to drive this horse. Now, Kurt, let us talk about a couple of these horses. We have some really very, very good pacers here, um, including the number two horse who was uh, hiding behind the number one. This is Hillbilly Orr hiding there behind Sticks and Scones. Yes, Hillbilly Orr comes into the race uh, with three wins in his last four starts. He had the eight hole in his last start here and, and just did, couldn't get anywhere. Had 12 lengths to make up from the half, but still paced a mile in 58. Uh, he was a winner here, um, three, three of his last four starts and one of the fastest one there in 57 and two. So he certainly is a leading contender and obviously is a horse that knows this track. Now, the horse that's the favorite in the race is Deacon Lobel, and if there's any question about him, it would be that uh, he's not all that familiar with this track. And uh, we'll have to see how he handles it. Is that usually a problem for a horse? This is a, an experienced race horse, though. Yes, for Deacon Lobel has the services of John Campbell tonight. He's trained by Joe Caraluzzi. Um, Deacon has won these last two starts, one in 57 and one at the Meadows and in 156 and two at Liberty Bell. Both of those are five-eighths mile tracks. Uh, he shows no half-mile track form, but uh, he's a veteran pacer. I'm sure he must have performed admirably on a half-mile track before. Uh, 11 wins this year uh, already for this good uh, son of Nansamon. Well, this is a good field as well. And of course, we mentioned earlier uh, Sticks and Scones, Bill O'Donnell driving her. This is a filly coming out of New York. That's where she primarily races, although she has traveled a little bit. Um, we're seeing a pacing filly, and of course we'll be seeing trotting fillies later. We talked a little bit earlier about uh, Fancy Crown beating the Colts. Pacing fillies, you don't see that all that much ha uh, often. I don't think Deacon LaBelle there was all that scared of this attractive filly here. But uh, does she have a chance? I think Sticks and Scones will get the first call. Uh, she's a great post filly, and she gets right out of the gate, and uh, there's no shocker about who will be on top going to the corner. Well, uh, she certainly would get support if she was in New York because she's very popular around Roosevelt and Yonkers. Okay, here are the current odds. Sticks and scones at 7-1, to one, but then again, it is a big task for a pacing filly to face the Colts. He'll be, or 5-2, to two, a lot of people like him. We see there's Deacon Lobel at 8-5. to five. Uh, First time in a while on this track, that might be kind of short odds on him. What do you think? I think Jeannie's Romanero, uh, who's the speed horse in the race from the three-hole, he went to the half in 55-3 and three, uh, off of the rail last week, but he's in the three-hole this week. Uh, if he can swing down there in a little more moderate time, uh, he's a speed horse by Nero. Uh, he, his speed might hold up this evening. Well, he is, uh, he's a good-looking horse, too. Looks like a good muscular uh, front quarters on this horse. Yes, well, he, war he warmed up exceptionally well, uh, and I think if he's not too stout going out of there and uh, he can you know, restrain him and not make him go too much, uh, he'll be a tough horse to beat in this field. Well, the horses are starting to line up behind the gate, so we are approaching uh, the start of this race. Remember, this is the fifth race, an invitational pace, $15,000, mostly Colts and Geldings. Uh, also one filly, they'll have to go around twice. Remember, it's a half-mile track, and they are getting behind the gate. And they are lining up. Billy Perkins is the track announcer. Let's go to Billy right now. Well, thank you, Sharon. Uh, all horses look like they're going to be on the gate as we get underway. It's a beautiful night here in Fort Washington, Maryland. 71 degrees out. Sticks and stones. A favorite in the field here, Deacon LaBell with John Campbell. We're ready to go. And there it go, driving out for the lead. G is wrong. Manero in the middle of the racetrack to challenge. Sticks and scones down along the rail. Going to keep him out there for a while. Uh, up on the outside, Deagle O'Bell now comes on third. Hillbilly Orr down along the rail in fourth. Uh, Duncan's right to get away fifth. Big Shift comes on sixth. Uh, happy seven racing seventh. The early trailer lumbering Mel. Uh, take him down the back lane. G is wrong. Manero, 27, uh, and four fence, they'll swing into uh, the paddock turn the first time. Uh, it's G.E.'s Romanero to cut it out. He's got about two uh, on sticks and scones, second by four. Deacon Lobel comes on third. Uh, Hillbilly are racing fourth, then it's Duncan's right in fifth. Big shift, happy seven, a lumbering mount in front of the grandstand. They'll roll down to the halfway mark. G.E.'s Romanero, the half goes fifth. 
26. And three fifths, the clubhouse turn the second time. GE's Romanero. The Garden Trip to Sticks and Scones in second. Now it's Tartar third. It's Deagle Lobel. He's underway. Hillbilly order close on him fourth. Duncan's right in fifth. Along the rail, big shift. Happy seven to the outside. Lumbering Mel begins his campaign. The field tightens. They drive with a three quarter mark. Sticks and Scones. Below down on the outside to take over the lead. 126. And three fifths, a quarter of a mile to go. It's a Sticks and Scones to show in front. Deacon LaBelle ready to challenge second. Hillbilly or third. Here comes Duncan's right now, fourth. Happy seven, fifth. Lumbering Bell to close on the field. They turn for the finish mark. Pacing through the lane. Sticks and Scones on top of the lane. Now Hillbilly or comes on strong in the middle. Sticks and Scones on the outside. Well, uh, look at the time, 55 and 4 by these good pacers. Uh, GE's Romanero, well, he made the pace a little too much pace. Well, again, he showed, you know, that, that brutal speed in the first half, and he was really unpressured for it. Uh, he also tired badly over there by the three-quarter mile mark, but a really good trip for Hillbilly Orr to come up uh, on the outside. He got to follow Deacon Lobel, and uh, in the stretch, really fired coming off the last corner, and... Uh, blew by uh, Sticks and Scones, who went a really creditable race. Well, Sticks and Scones raced superbly, and of course, uh, Bill O'Donnell had her there t uh, tucked in just in the position to take over when the three-horse uh, tired. She just didn't have enough, no matter how hard O'Donnell tried, tried to give her everything he could, but couldn't yeah, quite hold just, him off. She just can't hold off this horse's rush. I mean, he makes a really strong uh, finishing late move here, and... Uh, uh, it's a solid two and a half length winner and going away at the end of it. On the other hand, she did beat uh, Deacon Lobel, everybody's favorite here. So a good race by her. A good race, in fact, by the top three horses. Not so good by GE's Romanero, who uh, went a little too fast too soon. Yeah, it's only four-fifths of a second off of GE's Romanero's own track record. Uh, and a really creditable mile uh, this late in the season here when uh, obviously we don't get the heat and humidity that you get in the summertime. Well, it also uh, augurs well for a pretty fast time in our three-year-old filly trot coming up, I would think. I think the, uh, the track record, which is only two minutes in the fifth, uh, will fall tonight by a huge... Uh huge chunks. I think what we also noticed in this race, which we can sort of look forward to the next race, it's very, very tough on those horses on the outside. We're looking at horses in the first four post positions here involved in all the running of this race. And there he goes. Yeah, he's just going away at the end. I mean, uh, uh, John Hogan just gives him a little tap right there at the wire to keep him going, but uh, he made a very impressive move off the corner. And a good performance by this uh, very good five-year-old pacer. He is a Keystone or stallion and uh, bred in Kentucky at Stone Creek Stud in Kentucky. And there is the winner, probably happy to win on a night like this. That's yeah, this, <laughs> this is a new record for him. Uh, his previous best was 157 and two here. Uh, as we said, the, the last start he had at the eight hole and uh, came, got way out of the race, but still closed a lot of ground and obviously had a much better trip here tonight. Well, there's a lot of considerations that go into picking the horses you're going to follow in races like this one, and of course in the next race, uh, size of the track, the fifth, races uh, now of official. The winner, Hillbilly Orr, he paid seven forty-four dollars and three twenty to win. Sticks and Scones finishing second, she paid six and three sixty. In third place, Deacon Lobel, two eighty to show, one fifty-five and four. Fast time. We'll be back with more in a minute.